Okay, so when we're asked to solve a system of equations, what are we really trying to do? So in a case like this, when we have a, two system, a system of two equations with two variables here, what we're really trying to find is we have two lines here. We have two lines, something like this. Um, not, you know, this is just a random sketch of two lines. We're trying to find the intersection point of the two lines. We're trying to find the x and y coordinate of the intersection point. And for example, if we're in three dimensions, uh, we, would end, we have three variables, uh, three equations. We're trying to find the intersection point of three hyperplanes in three dimensions. Three-dimensional Euclidean space, I should note. Okay, so there are two possible kind of things that could happen, two main possible categories of things that could happen when we solve our system of equations. One is that we have a consistent system, which either means that we have one point of intersection here, or we have essentially both lines being the same line, so they intersect an infinite number of times, in which case the system is also consistent. Because in order to have a consistent system, we need to have one or more solutions. Uh, and finally, what could, ha what could happen is that we could have uh, two parallel lines here, which never intersect, so it's inconsistent, there are no solutions. Which would happen if you get something like 0 equals 1 or something like that, and you're like, okay, yep, no solutions. Uh, so that's what we're trying to identify here. So when we look at this and we're going to use algebraic methods uh, so called elementary operations in order to be able to solve this. So elementary operations, we can multiply any of these rows by a scalar, we can flip any of these rows, and we can add any of these rows to a scalar multiple of another row, which I will show here. So first of all, if you're not sure which variable to eliminate first, best to just kind of start with x's and move your way on over. Start with the lowest, what looks like it might be the easiest variable to eliminate first. In this case, x. So we're going to go ahead and multiply the second equation by negative 2, and then I'm going to add it to the first. So first of all, just recopy the first equation. 2x plus 3y is equal to 10, and I'm going to multiply the entire second equation here by negative 2. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 4y times negative 2 is going to be positive 8y. And then 5 times the negative 2 is going to be negative 10. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add these equations together. So 2x minus 2x just goes to 0. There's no x's. 3y plus 8y is equal to 11y. And 10 minus 10 is going to be equal to 0. So now we have 11y is equal to 0. We can divide by 11. And we find that y is equal to 0. OK, so now that we have our y, we can plug it into either of our two original equations to solve for x. So in this case, it looks like it might be easiest to plug it into the second equation here. So we now know that y equals 0, just copying down this equation here. We know from the beginning that x minus 4y is equal to 5, but we know from here that y is equal to 0. So this is equal to x minus 4 times 0 is equal to 5. 4 times 0 is just 0, so this gives us down here x is equal to 5. So now we have our solution, which we can write as an ordered pair. x, y, usually best to write these in alphabetical order unless explicitly told otherwise. x, y is an ordered pair, x is equal to 5, and y is equal to 0. So geometrically, this means that we have a consistent system that intersects at one point. So two lines, two separate lines intersecting at one point, something like this, except at 5, uh, 0. Um, if we had gotten something like y, like 0 is equal to 1 or 0 is equal to something that's not 0 over here, that means we would have an inconsistent system of parallel lines. Um, so a way that you can do this on your calculator is if you have kind of like a TI-84, some kind of graphing calculator that graphs in two dimensions here, you can, you can solve, you can plug this into the uh, y equals graphing function here by solving for y in, in both cases. So you just isolate y, solve for y, plug them in as two separate equations. You would hit graph, it graphs, and you can see they intersect at one point. And if you want to find that point of intersection on your calculator, this is just to check your work. You can go to uh, second calc, and then you hit 5, which is intersect. And then hit enter until it gives you the intersection point, which it confirms for us is 5, 0. So that shouldn't be your first line of action here when solving those. But just to check your work if you're in two dimensions, it's helpful to just plug in the lines and find the point of intersection just to check your work. So that would be the method that we would go about using to solve a system of equations just like this. To return to the equations menu, click here. To see more additional practice problems worked out, click here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. To visit our website, you can click here. And finally, to return to the main menu, you can click this link here. And as a reminder, if you haven't already done so, you can purchase the Free Calculus Blueprint by clicking on the link in the description of this video. 
Remember, it's only $1.95. Thank you for watching.